metaverse is really just something that we're running in parallel to reality world. And then there are infinite uh, connection points that's actually helping the two worlds to be integrated with one another. And the metaverse is simply put um, a virtual reality world where people can interact one to another uh, with other human beings or automated processes or automated entities to have an experience which is going to be three-dimensional in another world where we currently don't exist. Remember, we're not really talking about one universe. We're talking about multiple versions, each of which would actually require an enormous amount of computing power to render, to simulate, and to interact. So we really need a computing resource pool that's infinite, flexible, and that perfectly describes exactly what cloud computing can provide. Without cloud computing, I don't believe Metaverse is possible. VR has been mainstream in many ways, just not B2C. So there are companies that can't do without it now because they have relied on it for digital twin, for training. Um, starting in the same way, um, we're going to see the Metaverse and Web3 benefiting niche industries or pockets of the economy first. So we can take that to law enforcement training, we can take that to military training, we can take that to sales training, we can take that to other experiences they're able to simulate in the metaverse. They're going to be much more realistic to our brains than just sitting down and watching a two-dimensional video or as we used to do, reading books. A good example of metaverse is, you know, comes to mind is long distance and remote education or on a computer screen or even sometimes within a VR uh, glasses. But essentially what it is, it's really to create the feel, the immersive feel, that you're still in the classroom and you still can see your classmates, your teacher, while you're actually learning online. Some of that stuff can be a little hokey, but there are going to be places where it's going to make more sense for us to interact virtually in terms of engaging our brains differently, interacting with other human beings than it would be if we have to get on airplanes or even hop on two-dimensional Zoom calls. We have already started seeing uh, integration and interaction between metaverse and the real world in the construction setting um, we, we have a concept called digital twins uh, online you have a digital world representing all of the construction um, machine and then within that world a virtual world you can actually change the controlling uh, different knobs and so on and so forth and that in turn would actually interact with real world construction machines uh, machineries so essentially whatever you do in metaverse with, uh, have uh, real-world interactions um, with real-world machineries. I think where the big opportunities lie is for retailers to embrace Metaverse. In today's world, a lot of people are actually buying their clothes online. And then um, there are companies that are trying to actually have virtual fitting rooms online. But what's more than that is that we can actually use our camera to do a body scan. And then your avatar that you see in a virtual fitting room would actually represent exactly how you look. It'll actually give you a better understanding of how a piece of clothes would actually fit you. There is an opportunity that technology now provides in the future ahead, where you walk into malls you walk into shop spaces and you pick up products off the racks or the shelves or displays that are not there. For someone like me who's living in Singapore, I could have the luxury of putting on my HMD device, putting on haptic gloves so that I can feel virtual or simulated objects, right? Or digital twins of real life objects in the virtual world. And I could walk into a digital twin of a mall that exists somewhere in Monaco or London or Kenya or India. Someone without a budget for an actual physical shop space can open an online shop space where there's no limit to size. You can pick a manufacturer or a producer closest to a particular client or customer that purchases something in your online or virtual store in the metaverse space, and then you can have it delivered from there to optimize cost savings on the logistics.
people with the NFT evolution, um, content creators can actually own their piece and control a piece of their value you know, through marketplaces. Nike has rolled out sneakers that were never produced. You don't really wear it, but it's a collection in the NFT you know, marketplace, for example. And even in that particular direction, it has taken on a life of its own. Um, for example, the very famous Bot A Yacht Club is now a community, you know, kind of a recognition. If you have that in your digital profile, you get access to celebrities, clubs, parties, and so, so forth. I mean, there is going to be a market for uh, metaverse-based houses, metaverse-based advertising, you know, very much like social media marketing that we had over the 10 years ago, it's probably going to involve in the same way. But I think the one thing that many companies have uh, found out as they start to explore is that the metaverse would be rooted in or on would be the blockchain. So I think this is one thing that really caught on, especially with uh, logistics and financial services, because they would be able to then um, uh, chain up a lot of these things so that they will find a more decentralized way to secure some of them. With everything that is evolving tech-wise, um, to a certain extent, many converts are of the mindset that being early in the game always poses an advantage. And they rather invest a little bit to be able to do that than to regret it later and say, wow, now what do I do because it's, uh, it's too mature. If we're looking to the future, and this is my personal favorite or my personal aspiration, what if we can actually go into a metaverse and learn how to cook? Um, this would actually be um, the crown jewel, at, you know, if you think about it, because um, if you want to learn how to cook in metaverse, not only that you have to have uh, motion detection, right? You have to have uh, a, a realistic environment, but at the same time, you have to have, have heightened senses in the metaverse. You, you want to be able to smell the things that you want, uh, that you learn how to cook. You want to have to feel that you're actually cutting something. I think it's going to take a while for people to accept using the metaverse and get comfortable with it. Certainly wearing, uh, you know, virtual reality goggles for, uh, you know, 12 hours a day is something I wouldn't recommend. Uh, it'll give you a headache. Um, but use it for its purpose. Use it when it's going to provide value and use it in certain ways in which you can market products, provide better experiences, better training. And those are the opportunities we're seeing right now.